Hi, and welcome to With Chanukya. Today we'll be talking about REST APIs and how you can build them using Node.js and Express. Let's get started. In today's tutorial, we're going to be building a REST API. So before we start actually building, let's just go through a quick primer here. So before we talk about what REST APIs are, you need to understand what a client-server architecture is. In this architecture, we have a client and we have a server. And the server is where you have your REST APIs being built. And the REST APIs essentially are a collection of operations that are exposed using routes. So if you want to create a new employee, you use the post operation on the employee route. If you want to retrieve the employees, you can use the get operation on the employee route. We'll see more of this as we build the API in this tutorial. Some of the important things in this are HTTP, which is a protocol that is used to send the request and then receive the response between the client and the server. So the client sends a request to the server asking for a certain access to a certain resource and then waits for the HTTP response back from the server. So let's take a quick look at an example REST API. So in this tutorial today, we'll be building an API that manages docs. That's our resource. In this API, we have multiple different operations that are defined by what we call as HTTP verbs. So you can use a post to create, you can use put to update, you can use get to retrieve, and you can use delete to well delete. So you can use different types of HTTP operations to use CRUD on top of your resources. So when we want to get a dog by its ID, use the get route with dog and a path parameter, which is ID. Let's take a look at how we'll build this in the actual tutorial today. We'll be using Node.js and Express to build our API today. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime that allows us to build server-side applications. So if you've been doing web development, you might have seen JavaScript being used on the client side for things like form validations and others. Node.js allows us to start building server-side applications and REST APIs using Node.js. Express is a web application framework that allows us to use reusable components, middleware, routing, and things like that. It just makes the process of creating web applications using Node.js a lot more easier. Node.js is quite popular. It's used by a lot of um, large companies around the world, like companies like PayPal, Uber, and others. So let's go ahead and dive into it. If you'd like to hear more content like this, more tech tutorials, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon at the bottom. Let's get started. We're going to be working in Visual Studio Code today. Um, I'm using Mac OS, so that's my environment. Um, I already have Node.js um, installed um, on my machine as well. I'll, um, I'll share the download links in the description below. Uh, just before we get started, all of the code samples, examples, everything from this tutorial will be available in my um, Git repositories, which I've also linked um, in the description below. So let's go ahead and get started. The first step for us is going to be to create a um, Node.js project. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go ahead and open up the terminal. And we're going to use um, npm in it. So npm is Node Package Manager. We're going to go ahead and do npm in it which will allow us to walk through the creation of a Node.js project. Um, so it's going to ask the name. Um, I'm going to call this Dogs API because that's what we're going to be building. Uh, version, we can leave it as is. API that retreat, that um, gives CRUD operations for dogs. And then I'm going to name mine app.js. You can name it anything you want. Um, we're going to leave some of the other words empty. We'll then create add the author, the license, and then say yes. So basically what this is going to do, it's going to create um, a package.json file. And that JSON file is going to have all of these details within it. So that's essentially what um, a Node.js project contains. You can create this package.json file on your own as well. But npm in it is just an easier way of doing it. So basically what this describes is a lot of metadata about your project and then the main um, package, which is app.js, which it's going to run. Um, and again, some more metadata, author, things like that. Uh, we'll come back to scripts uh, later in the tutorial. So the next step for us would be to create the app.js. Uh, what I'm going to do is, just as a best practice, is I'm going to create a source folder. 
<coughs> in, um, in my directory here. I'm then gonna go ahead into the source folder and then we're gonna use um, touch to create the app.js file. So this app.js file is where all of my um, code for this application is gonna be. So that's the main point of entry. Um, again, let's go ahead to package.js and let's add that over there. You can do that later as well. And we'll go ahead and do console.log, welcome to Witchanikia. And this is just a simple console.log statement that we'll print to the terminal uh, when we run this particular application. So it's as simple as that in terms of creating a Hello World Node.js application on the server. Um, now the step to run this would be to go back to our root folder where we created the project and you use the node command. So you would go node, <coughs> sources the folder, and then app.js. And it's as simple as that. Now, the next thing that we're gonna learn here is dependencies. So you can use Node to install modules and dependencies to your Node project that'll help you um, help it make easier for you to build applications using Node.js. So the first dependency that we're gonna use is something called Nodemon. So changing code and running the Node command every time is gonna be a bit difficult. So we want something where it can watch for changes and then redeploy or rerun our Node.js program. So that's what Nodemon does. The way we're gonna do that is do npm install. We're gonna use hyphen hyphen save, but then we're gonna add dev because we don't want Nodemon in like our production deployments. It's only gonna be used when I'm developing the application on my local machine. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. NPM is gonna go ahead and do its thing, install Nodemon. And once that installation is done, if you go to your package.json file, you can actually see that the dev dependency was added with the version, everything. So this makes sure that your dependencies are not global across your, uh, your machine. Instead, they're specific for your project. So once we do this, we can then go ahead and say nodemon and then give it the same path and say run. And then anytime we go back to our app.js file or any JS file in the project, and we say, welcome to Witchanikia, and then we just add tutorials here at the end and hit save, it'll rerun it with the new code. Brilliant. All right, now that we have a Hello World Node.js application running, one of the next steps would be to make this command a bit more easier. So rather than type nodemon source slash app.js, we just wanna give a simple start command. So to do that, we're gonna use scripts within package.json. So over here, I have a test script. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and we're gonna rename it as start, and we're gonna say nodemon source slash app.js, because that's the command that we're giving it right now. So now we can go ahead, we'll do control C again to close uh, the nodemon session, and then we'll go ahead and instead of doing nodemon, we're just gonna say npm start. And this is gonna run the same thing for us, just in an easier manner. The next step for us is to create an actual web server. So we're gonna use express to do that. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So we're gonna declare a variable and then require this to bring express into our application. We're then gonna initialize express using constant app equal to express. That's a function that we can call. And now that we have this app, we can go ahead and say app.listen, which basically starts the server and expecting a port here. So we're just gonna say port, and then we're gonna say, give it an error callback, and then create a function here. And we're gonna say console.log, the server has been started. So that's gonna be our server. The only problem here is we don't have a port, so let's define the port as well as a constant. And we'll say 9900, just a sample port. You can give any port number that you want. And then we'll save this. So now you see, we have a web application server that's running and the server has been started. Now we don't have any API routes within this to actually use. So let's go ahead and get an API route created as well. So we'll say app.get and then first you have to give it the path. So we're gonna say slash dogs is our path. Then you have the request coming in, the response, and what do you wanna do with the within this particular route? So in this case, once again, we're just gonna say console.log. This is within the get slash dogs route. And then obviously we have to send a response back. So we'll do response dot 
status, and we'll say 200, which is a successful HTTP status. And then we'll say send. This is a get response. Beautiful. So now we have an actual API or an API route within our application. So to go ahead and test this out, we can actually use an application called Postman. You can use other things like the browser, curl, or others. I'm just going to use Postman. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new get route. And I'm going to say localhost colon 9900, which is our port. And I'm going to say slash dogs. So this is going to hit that API. And as you can see, we get the response. Now, usually, HTTP responses for APIs would be a status along with a JSON object. So instead of sending a string, let's actually see if we can create some dogs and actually send them. So for that, we're going to go ahead and say let dogs equal to, let's create an array so that we can create multiple dogs. And within this, we'll go ahead and create some dogs. So we'll give it an ID, we'll give ID one, we'll give it a name, we'll call the first name happy. And we'll say that this is a golden retriever. Beautiful. So that's one dog. Let's go ahead and create a couple more. I'm going to copy the object so that we can just replace the values. And we'll give this two. We'll call this dog Mika. And let's say that this is a husky. Beautiful. So now we have dogs. So instead of sending just a string, we'll go ahead and replace this. And we'll say, send the dogs. And now, if you go ahead back to Postman, and you hit that same API, instead of getting that string, you're actually getting a JSON object. All right, so now that we have a basic API up and running, let's say let's make this a bit more complex. So right now we're responding back with all the dogs. I want to create a route that will respond back with only a dog, and that too, based on the name of the dog. So we're going to create another get route. And we're going to say slash dog because we want only one dog to be returned. And we're going to add a path parameter here. So we're going to call that name. So basically, whenever we send the name, we want the details of that dog to be sent back to us. So in this particular route, first, let's start off just by trying things out. So let's say rest.status 200. And then let's say send. And we'll send the name back. The way we can access that is by saying request.params and then the name of that path parameter. So that's the way to access path parameters in Express. So now we can go over to Postman. We'll create another test here. We'll say localhost 9900 slash dog. And then let's give it a value there. We'll say slash happy. So when we click send, this should respond back with us with the same value, which is happy. And boom, there we go. So now let's go ahead and add some search logic. We want to check this array and then be able to respond back with the details about the dog that we're asking for, in this case, happy. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and say dogs dot for each. We're going to use a for each loop. And within a for each loop, you can get each, um, each dog as an iteration. So we'll say dog is that um, a variable there. And then we'll create an error function. So now we have the value of dog. We're going to say if dog.name equal to equal to the path parameter, then we have a match. So if we have a match, let's do rest.status 200.send. Let's send the dog over, right? Great. We should be able to find the dog and send it over. Let's go back over to Postman. In this case, we'll hit the same request once again. You send it over and you have the details about happy now. The problem with this is we haven't handled the error case, which is what happens when the resource is not found. So we say happy one, which is not available in our array, and send it. You're just stuck because we're not handling that case. So we're going to hit cancel here. We're going to come back. What we're going to do is we're going to create a variable, and we'll say not found equal to true, which basically means the assumption is that we haven't found the dog. Now, in case we have found the dog, we'll change that assumption to false in this case. And then after the for loop, we're just going to do a quick check 
to check if not found is still true. If it's true, we want to go ahead and say rest.send status and we'll send a 404, which is resource not found. If you find the dog, then we're just responding here and it's anyways going to be false, so this won't run. So we're going to go ahead and save that. We're going to come back to Postman and if we hit happy one, we should get a 404. So you can see 404 not found, not found. Brilliant. So the next step here for us is for us to be able to modularize this a bit more. So Express provides something called as a router. So that allows you to actually remove a lot of this business logic that we have from your app.js file, which is your main entry point, into routes. Let's go ahead and do that. So the first step for us in terms of creating routes separately using the router within Express would be to create a separate routes folder. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to create a new directory within source and we'll call it routes. Let's go ahead and move into that directory. And within this, we're going to create a dog.routes.js. So this is going to be our routes file, which has all of the dog related routes. If you have a large API, so you have one for dogs, one for owners, one for breeders, so on and so forth, you can have different routes um, for different entities or resources. You This would be a good way to structure it um, for you. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to use code command to open up this dog roots file. The first thing that we're going to do is again, import express or require express. And we're then going to create the router. So we're going to say express dot router. So that's going to initialize the router for us. And before we actually bring the routes in, we're going to have to export this router as well. So we're going to do module dot exports equal to router. So we can actually import this router into our app.js file. We'll do that in a second. Before we do that, let's go back to our app.js file. We're going to copy all this code, which is actually our routes. So the dogs array, which is our data, and the two routes that we created. Do command X to copy that. And we'll go to our routes and paste it here. One of the changes we're going to have to do is instead of app.get, this becomes router.get. Everything else remains the same. So we're going to change that for both of our routes here. So we have that. Now our router is ready. The next step for us is to make sure that this router is actually being used by the web application that we've created here. So to do that, we have to import our router, which we exported as a module. So we're going to go ahead and call this dog routes equal to require. And then we'll do dot slash routes. And then within routes, we want dog routes. We don't have to give it the dot JS at the end. It'll still work. The last step in terms of using this is to make sure that you can actually add the router to your app. So you'd use the use for that. So we're going to go ahead and say app.use and we're going to say dog routes. And that basically is going to ensure that our routes are added using a concept called middleware within Express to our server. So now we can go back over to Postman. You can go ahead and say, hey, I want the details of all the dogs that are running on your server. Go ahead and click send. Oops, I forgot to start our server. So let's go ahead and actually start that. Our server is running. Go ahead and hit send. And we have all the dogs. Let's go ahead here. We'll search for happy. He's a golden retriever. And we'll search for happy with a one or hap one and not found. So beautiful. There it is. You now have a fully functioning REST API that is exposing get routes. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you'd like more content like this, click the like button on the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon to get notifications about new videos that I release. Thanks for watching.